Imagine Boeing took a 747SP and completely overhauled the aircraft interior with a glass cockpit, new seats, and everything. Could they then take the old and inefficient four engines and replace them with the new GE9X or the revolutionary Rolls-Royce Ultrafan? In short, could Boeing revive the 747 by going from a quad jet to a twin jet? If Boeing wanted to save the 747 and bring it back to production, then they would need to make it competitive in today's market. Quad jet engines are no longer fuel efficient. Twin engine jet are taking over. And if Boeing wants to keep the 747, they will need to completely redesign the aircraft. First off, they will need to lift the wings and reinforce them so the plane can support the weight of the twin engine configuration. The tail would also need a complete redesign because of the new twin engine configuration. As aircraft engine technology advanced, twin engine configurations became safer and more reliable than quad engine ones. This resulted in Boeing taking the 747 out of production because four engines became simply redundant. Before we talk a little more about the popularity decline of the 747, don't forget to smash the like button if you enjoyed the video so far. After 55 years of production, the 747 was finally discontinued in 2023 due to the low number of orders. The decision marked the end of an era. After all, the plane was first rolled out in 1968 and took its first flight on the 9th of February, 1969. At the time, Boeing was untouchable, taking almost all wide-body orders in the industry. Neither the Lockheed Tristar nor the McDonnell DC-10 could even come close to this jumbo jet. For comparison's sake, Douglas stopped producing the DC-10 in 1989, while Lockheed discontinued the TriStar five years earlier in 1984. From the 174 aircraft produced in 55 years, there are around 50 aircraft that are still in service with airlines like Lufthansa, Korean, Air Saudia, Air China, Asiana Airlines, and UPS Airlines. French aircraft manufacturer Airbus became somewhat of a competitor to Boeing in 1974 when they introduced the A300. Unfortunately, many airlines didn't go for it because its shorter range could carry fewer passengers and used only two engines. You might think that this was revolutionary at the time, but this is the 70s. We're talking about twin engine aircraft weren't nearly as popular as they are today. So Boeing still dominated the industry with a 747. Fortunately, they were smart enough to see that twin jets would become the future of aviation and they introduced the 777 in 1993. Currently, it's the most built wide body jet with 1735 units produced so far. It also takes the cake for the world's largest twin jet after considerable innovation. Boeing finally introduced the 787, which is a combination of a wide body and a narrow body aircraft. It's suitable for long haul travel, but it's much smaller than a wide body aircraft. Slowly, the popularity of the 747 was slowly declining. That's until talks about a possible twin jet. 747 appeared online. So is this even possible? Apparent currently, if Boeing can find an engine that could provide enough thrust in a dual engine configuration, then this might just work. Currently, the largest Boeing 747 model, the 747-8, uses four Gen X-2 B67 engines, each of which produce 6,500 pounds of thrust for a total of 2,060 pounds of thrust. And this is a big problem. There's no doubt in our mind that big airlines like Emirates could operate a twin jet 747 with a massive capacity of 467 passengers in a three-class configuration. But finding an engine to power this massive beast of an airplane is the problem. Some have pointed out that the G9X that's going to be used on the 777X could be a good substitute. The problem is the engine is too big to fit under the wings. It has a diameter of 174 inch or 440 centimeters, but can produce up to 110,000 pounds of thrust. But what if Boeing goes with Rolls-Royce's new ultrafan engine? Now you might say, but wait, isn't the ultrafan six and wider than the G9X? Of course, the Rolls-Royce Ultrafan has a 140 in diameter, which is wider than the fuse lodge of the 737. But there's something a lot of people don't know the beauty of the Ultrafan when produced. Won't be the 140 diameter fan, the 15 to one bypass ratio, or the one 10,000 pounds of thrust. No, the beauty of this engine will be its modality. You see, even though Boeing might need to redesign the wings on the 747, the Ultrafan can be shrunk down to fit any aircraft with only minor decreases in thrust. 
This way, the 747 Twin Jet might finally become what 747 Trey Jet never was speaking of, which what if we told you that the most popular quad-engine aircraft almost became a tri-jet if Boeing decides to modify the tail wing and landing gear of the 747, it won't be the first time wanting to rival McDonnell Douglas's MD-11 and Lockheed Martin's M-1011. Boeing decided to build a tri-jet aircraft unlike today back then. Boeing already had a tri-jet in production, the 727. However, the 727 was a narrow-body aircraft not suitable for long-haul flights. But the 747 Trijet was about to change that. It was going to carry more passengers and have greater payload than its competitors. However, what was supposed to be a dream airliner turned into an engineering nightmare for three main problems. First, just like with the Ultrafan and the GR E9X examples. Boeing needed to completely redesign the wings to offer structural stability. The wings weren't strong enough to support a single heavy engine under each wing. They were designed to distribute the weight of the engines across the entire wing. As a result, the second problem became apparent. The engineering team would need to significantly shorten the aircraft. And third, and arguably, the biggest problem Boeing risked never getting orders for the 747 Trijet. As you may know, Trijet wide-body aircraft are rare. This means airlines would avoid placing orders for the new aircraft because they would then have to retrain all their pilots. It would be cheaper and easier to simply switch to a competitor's quad-jet wide-body aircraft. So the Trijet never entered production, but they did come up with the 747SP or Special Performance in 1976 instead of a Trijet. The 747SP kept its four engines. The only difference being it was shorter than the original 747. The model became popular with some airlines and four aircraft are in service today. One of those four is Sophia, which has a gigantic door in the back that opens to reveal a flying telescope in midair. Now you might be wondering why would a twin jet succeed where a tri-jet failed and to tell you the truth. We don't know the company has so many orders for their new aircraft that it would be much wiser to spend time getting production back to schedule instead of redesigning an old aircraft. So that is why we ask, why should Boeing even bother with a 747 twin jet? If Boeing allocates funds and engineering hours to build a 747 twin jet, it will be a dumb idea, we get it. The 747 is an iconic plane with its wide body and partial double deck design. It's been in service for 55 years and over its lifetime, Boeing has developed it into the Dreamlifter, a shuttle carrier aircraft, a super tanker, and a version of it is currently being used to transport the President of the United States as Air Force One. Of course, fans would want Boeing to still produce the 747. Simply put, it's a legendary aircraft that's still in service. But if you look at this from a financial perspective, then things don't really add up, even if we assume that the modality of the Ultrafan will allow Boeing to find an engine small enough and powerful enough to power the 747 in a dual engine configuration. Why would they? Redeveloping the wind wings, the tail, and the landing gear takes a lot of time and money, and Boeing currently has neither. It would be a lot smarter for the company if they focused on developing the 777X, their current $442 million. Twin jet wide body aircraft, for which they already have 450 orders since they first announced the aircraft in 2013. It's new, it's fuel efficient, it's a twin jet, it has reduced CO2 emissions, and on top of all that, it's a long-haul aircraft that can carry 426 passengers in a two-class configuration to a destination 8,400 miles away. So if you were Boeing, would you be investing in a new aircraft for which you have almost 200 billion in orders? Or would you be spending valuable resources and time on a new aircraft that is on track to replace the actual plane you're trying to revamp? Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next one.